right. So great topic for today. So welcome, welcome for all of you all that are new to me. My name is Sunday Gardner and we come here a couple of times a week talking all things at travel, uh, launching operations, marketing, uh, a travel business. And so today's topic, we are going to start with group trip promotions. The whole month of August, we are going to be focusing on group trips. And if you have not already registered for our three-day workshop, which will be happening August 26th, 27th, and 28th, I'm going to give you the link right here in chat for you to go ahead and register for our sweet success workshop where we are going to not only talk about groups, but we're going to be spending three days together talking all about group trips. And um, hold on, I am not good at multitasking. I should have had this already ready. Uh, but I am going to put that right here in uh, so that you can sign up for our workshop. It's so funny, I was playing with um, Zoom and now I've got this feature on that I cannot figure out how to turn off. Um, but while I try and figure out my life, um, you guys tell me in comments, how many of you guys have group trips planned for 2024 or have you already started planning for your 2025 group trips? Let me know in comments if you have, where are you planning to go? What are you planning to sell? What is your group trip that you're getting ready uh, to focus on and want to learn how to promote and sell out of? So we are actually headed to Bali in um, two days, three days, actually. Um, all right. So we've got Bali in Japan, which is great. Scotland, 2025. Italy, Greece and Barbados. Italy, Napa. Uh, just launched 2025. That is correct. I mean, we are in the eighth month of the year at the time of this recording. And so if you are not planning for 2025, you're a little behind the eight balls. So it's obviously not too late to start planning your group trips or your signature itineraries, but we are the kind of business that needs to be at least 12 to 18 months out in terms of promoting travel and trips that we are selling. So you guys have some amazing destinations planned. Super excited for all of you all. Tell me in comments kind of what are your general ways that you promote your trips now? How do you do it? Do you use social media? Do you do email marketing? Are you doing ads? Are you doing all of the above, right? And what we're going to focus on today is really some organic strategies that you can utilize to help promote your trip. Because what I like to always say, don't create a thing without promoting that thing and don't promote the thing without tracking the thing. So we want to always be in a promotion spirit when we create a thing. And so when you create your group trip, it should be all about ongoing promotions of that trip. Promotion cycles. How many of you guys know what a promotion cycle is and that you follow it? I remember when I first learned what a promotion cycle was, it was probably in 20, uh, 2020. I had been marketing and knew about advertising, but I didn't really understand the concept of cycles that I understood that I should promote a lot, but I didn't really understand the sort of psychology of promotion and the frequency by which we should promote. Just give me a number. I love interacting with you all. So just give me a number and tell me how many promotion cycles or times do you promote your group trips? So for us, we promote, when we do a group trip, we plan for at minimum four promotion cycles for that trip, not to mention ongoing promotions or visibility that we give our trips we pretty much give them visibility in our newsletters. We give them on our websites. So we have sort of standing visibility that we do for our trips, but we have at minimum four cycles that we do. I call it our early bird. And then we usually, once we launch a trip, we start every other month promoting that trip. So we're every month promoting some sort of trip. Heard of it, but haven't applied it to my travel business yet. 
social media, word of mouth, video, social media, and no ads. Okay. All right. Well, today, what we're going to do, we're going to dive in. And first, thing, I'm going to teach you about what a promotion cycle is. And then I'm going to give you three quick strategies. And I absolutely want you to register for our group trip setup. Uh, it's groups, setup, and management sweet success workshop that we're having August 26th, because three days we're going to be focused on that topic and really helping you craft those signature trips, promote them, and make sure that you have the right tools in place. All right, so let's first do a little screen share. Let me make sure I have my, um, my screen available and ready to share to you all. Let me share my screen. So we can talk a little bit about what a promotion cycle looks like and what you should be doing in said promotion cycle so that you can ensure that you get like the hype, right? Before I like even dive into this, you know, it made sense when I learned the promotion cycle. How many of you guys are Apple users? You know, before I even share, like how many of you guys have Apple phones? Do you have an Apple phone, right? I'm not a fruit user, but I am very familiar with Steve Jobs and I am very familiar with Apple's uh, marketing tactics. And the first thing that they do when they get ready to launch a new Apple phone, a new device, is they do what's referred to in the marketing space as a pre-launch right? They get you all hyped up around the anticipation of this new thing that they're going to do. How many of you guys are familiar with that, right? So, uh, you know, they built up this energy. They spend a lot of effort and time building up the excitement around the drop of their fill in the blank. It doesn't matter what it is, right? The new version, the new widget, the new ear pods, their new, it doesn't matter they build, they do a pre-launch and they get you hyped up about this new thing. And what they create is what's referred to is sort of this fear of missing out. Have you guys ever heard of FMO, which is fear of missing out? And you don't want to miss if you're an Apple user, because they've got a huge community of people that love, love, love their fruit devices and all that they have to stand for when it comes to their devices, their gadgets and everything. So their community is excited about this gadget dropping. But it's all by design, the way that they do this. The way that they do it is they they let you know it's coming soon. They don't just say, okay, now you can get, you know, version 2,055,000 million, right? They say it's coming soon. They do like marketing around the gadget and they make you feel like if you don't, if you're not the one that has this new fill in the blank, Apple, whatever, you're missing out. And all of the Apple users who they want the new version, it's it's all marketing, right? They want this thing that's the new version. It's all marketing and you can do the same thing. And so now I'm going to share the, the cycle. I wanted to give you that example because Apple does it well. They do the whole launch well. I'm going to give you something that's related to the travel industry that I thought was amazing. So I want to say it was last year or maybe it was two years ago. Um, was it Norwegian or was it, I think it was Norwegian. It, for the launch of their new ship, they sent I don't know who they sent, but did you, do you guys remember they sent this box? It was a blue, it looked like a Tiffany blue box. And they sent the box of stuff to certain people to let them know about the new ship that was coming. Like I had this huge fear. I don't even, I don't even sail Norwegian. I think it was Norwegian. I think they did it two years ago. And they sent these blue boxes. And so there's all these people with these blue boxes um, doing these reveal about the box and it was about the new ship that they were launching and that's called an announcement. And so let me now share my screen because that's exactly what I want you guys to start doing when it comes to launching your trips. And so this first step in the promotion cycle is all around the excitement, building up excitement around your trip. 
letting people know that it's coming, that they can't buy it now yet. They can't even get in on it yet, but you are only talking about why it's the bomb.com, why your ideal audience would love, love to be there and how, if they aren't on that trip, they're going to be missing the time of their life. This whole phase, there's a phase to it too. This whole phase is focused on building up like pent up energy around the trip. And so you want to have a phase that's here. So you guys have all these amazing trips that are going, build excitement before you actually let people buy into it, create videos, create announcement, create email campaigns, create newsletter, create sneak peeks all around the trip that you're about to launch. And then we actually announce it. So we give people a small window of opportunity for which they can then buy. And then all of the people that buy and opt into the trip, we celebrate them. So we talk about them on our social media platforms, on our YouTube channel. We are talking about all of the people who've taken advantage because that even by talking about the people that have taken advantage of it creates another sort of frenzy of missing out that buyers don't want to miss. Oh, Jane bought the trip to Africa. Well, why aren't I buying the trip to Africa? Why am I not going to Africa like Jane? Right? So the idea is to celebrate those people who've made the investment or taken advantage of it. And then you want to just repeat, you want to onboard your people and make sure that they have an amazing onboarding. They know what they can expect until they actually go on the trip. And we repeat this at minimum four times. So when we do a promotion cycle, we do it, you know, we do it, we, we create a bundle of special incentives that are associated only with that promotion cycle. And we do it two, three, four times concerted efforts, meaning, and what I will say is we, and I tell my clients this all the time, we never discount the trip. So if the trip is $5,000, when we promote it the first time, it's not going to be it's not going to be discounted for $3,000. So we don't ever discount the trip. But what we do do is add unique bonuses to the trip that a person who buys the first time, that's the only time they're going to be able to get the bonuses. One of the great things that we do, and we do it pretty consistently on that first announcement or that first promotion is that we give a discounted deposit. So our normal deposit is anywhere from 300 to 500. When we do our first announcement, we may have it as low as 150 or 200. Or, you know, I was talking to a client a couple of weeks ago and they uh, did a, a promotion around Super Bowl. And I think it was Super Bowl 58. It's a really great idea. And so they did a $58 deposit because it was Super Bowl 58. And it's a great idea. So you know, no one who gets in on promotion cycle two is ever going to be able to get that $58 or that low, that low deposit. So we create bonuses associated with our promotions that really make it a, a, an attractive offer. That first promotion, we do a different set of bonuses, second, third, and fourth promotion. Usually by the time we get to our fourth promotion, we're doing sort of a last minute deal. And, um, you know, it's going to be like our last few uh, openings that are available for our group trips. So that is really the cycle. I want you to understand the cycle because that cycle we go through these four steps every cycle, every single cycle we go through those four steps. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about some strategies. First strategy, and when I'm talking about strategy, this is really strategy around how do you put together that promotion? So if I'm going to do promotion one, maybe it's going to be a hosted pop-up event, right? And so I'm going to be promoting attendance to that event. And then I'm going to talk all about the group trip unveiling. Maybe the end, you know, part of that event is to unveil the group trip and then talk about the great bonuses that are available for this particular promotion. So 
when it comes to promoting your group trips, if you have a themed, maybe promotion cycle one is going to be a themed pop-up where you're going to do an event, let's say 18, like, so let's say you're doing 2025, it's August and you're selling trips for Christmas market 2025 next year. And you start promoting that now. I would do a back to school uh, uh, pop-up event or a meetup to talk about the Christmas market because this is a perfect time to be talking about Christmas. It's kind of late to be selling 2024 Christmas, but maybe what I would do as a bonus as for 2024 in preparation for my 2025 Christmas is that we, you know, at this event that I have in August, I would be talking about like, you can join me at my Christmas party um, and then you can buy into the 2025, right? So the bonus would be a free ticket to the Christmas party that I'm going to have, or maybe the Christmas cocktail. I love cocktails. I love cocktail parties. So I love throwing happy hour parties. So that would be the kind of thing that I would do. Having a hosted theme pop-up event, that would be promotion cycle one. And there would be all this hoopla around the event proper. I would want to focus on getting attendees to that event and really the cat's meow of that event is the unveiling of my Christmas market trip that I'm unveiling for sales in 2025. Hopefully that makes sense. Listen, that's just an idea in terms of a theme, right? You literally could pick any themes. You could do a Christmas theme event. You could do a Halloween theme, a fall event. It doesn't matter. Pick a theme. I told you guys um, in this week's training, the last training I did, you should be promoting around holiday reasons to celebrate. So celebration days. And so doing an event that is focused and that's themed around that is a really great idea for you guys to then promote your trip as a part of that. Listen, the whole idea around promotion and your the what you want to do is you want to get eyes excited about your event. And so I just, I love meetups. I love specific events to do that. So strategy one is really this idea of a pop-up event or a meetup where you have got a theme for the event and then you invite people and then you're unveiling your group trip as the offer. Listen, I love people that already have traffic. <laughs> I love traffic owners and traffic owners are influencers or people who already have your ideal client already locked up. Right. So if I was an, an, in the adventure travel space, so people who sell adventure gear, they already have my 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 uh, my type of client locked up. Right. They already have access to my uh, ideal client. So creating some sort of travel ambassador program where you have either past travelers or local influencers together and you partner with them to promote your trip. Um, this is such an easy, real, this is a lot easier than you all think, particularly if you, uh, you create a win-win situation for your partner. The, the thing that a lot of people do when they partner with uh, someone is they're thinking about themselves. I want you to do something for me. What's in it for the influencer? And so a lot of people think, well, I don't really like working with influencers because influencers want free trip, but influencers also like money. <laughs> and so what you can do, and you know, this is obviously not a pricing conversation. I don't know what your markups are. I don't know what your profit margin is. But, you know, one of the things I do teach is making sure that you have a healthy profit margin in your group trips. Really, you shouldn't be planning group trips where you have uh, less than 30 uh, percent profit built in to the way that you price the trip. If you do, that's a whole different conversation. But if you do work with ambassadors, creating a pricing model that allows them to get a percentage of sales that doesn't eat into your margin because you've priced it appropriately is a win-win opportunity for an ambassador or an influencer. So all that I would say is if you are going to go to uh, an affiliate model or an ambassador model, make sure that it's, it's advantageous for them, right? Even if you, maybe you're not doing a percentage of sales, give them a free seat on the trip. Whatever you do, just make it attractive. So, you you know, there is no such thing in the world where you get 
you get something for free. That's really worth it. You really just don't get a lot of stuff for free uh, without there being some cost to it. So if you're going to partner with somebody who already has access to your market, make sure that it's a win for them. Ambassador programs are perfect ideas. And I'm not talking like five dollars. Right. That's not that's not a that's not a real big incentive. Make it an incentive for them to want to push your product, your group trip hard, right? Make it so attractive that they're like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a no brainer. Right. And so again, you don't have to make it so that you lose out, but certainly make it so that it's attractive for your ambassador to want to sell. And also you want to make it easy for them to sell. Like you don't want them to have to do all the work. So you don't want them to have to create the social media graphics, the post content, the sales pages, make that all easy for them so that when they when they spread the word, they just have to go to a link that already has their affiliate tracking in them. You don't want them to have to track the information for them. You want to make it super easier. You know, in Travel Pro Suite, we have a way for you to create affiliate campaigns for ambassadors that make it so easy to do. We're actually going to do a separate training on that. But having a way to track affiliate sales that are effortless for you, make it easy for you. And then you create the sales page, all of the marketing assets and your sales ambassador, your travel ambassador can just spread the word to the audience of people that you want on your group trip. Strategy number three is we sort of talked about this a little bit in our last training, but hosting a virtual travel show. I bring it up again because it's a really great idea really around your group trip. So let me look at comments to see what you guys told me some of your group trip ideas are. Um, because these group trip ideas really lend itself to, um, hold on, let me see if I can find the chat window. Let's see where, there it is. All right. So some of the ideas of, that you guys said that you're going, so someone said Christmas markets, Dubai, Bali, somebody, some people are going to South Africa. So creating a travel show, like a three-day virtual travel show around the Christmas market. And I would sell Christmas market 2025 because again, it's, it's, it's kind of late. So I would actually host that travel show maybe in October of this year. And I would be talking about all things Christmas. I would do like bonuses that people could get that would give them like Christmas, um, uh, Christmas paraphernalia that they could use in 2025, but they're getting themselves out of town for 2020, uh, 2024. They would get like, 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 I, like, I just actually, it's so funny. So last weekend I was out of town and my friend, she does a, uh, she, she's like a huge Christmas decorator and she and I were decorating these Christmas balls. And like, so I have this vision, like if you did a Christmas virtual travel show for this season, you know, your travel show could give away Christmas ornaments, right? And that could be the bonus that you give, like unique uh, Christmas bonuses that maybe uh, touted the market that you were selling. So like if you're doing Christmas river cruises or Europe and Christmas, it doesn't matter wherever you're doing Christmas, I would do Christmas balls as giveaways. And, and I swear, I'm sure you could find stuff on Etsy or um, Temu, uh, what is it, T Timu, T-E-M-U, all sorts of paraphernalia that you could uh, give away at pretty low cost and do that as a part of your travel show. The travel show proper would really be focused on a Q&A, live presentation, supplier, virtual shows of the destination and things to do. I would make it multi-day. I would have suppliers involved. I would have local um, local uh local small businesses that I either would become partners with or get affiliated with. And then I would have a travel virtual show. Um, the more I talk about this, the more excited about a virtual travel show I am getting. Um, this is now the second time I've talked about it and I'm just like tickled pink about the idea. And so how many of you guys like the idea of doing a pop-up shop or a virtual travel show or even having an ambassador? I love having 
having affiliates, um, some wineries, podcast influencers, um, Kavana, that is really a great idea. I love, I, I just love partnering. Um, you know, the older I, not the older I get, I'm going to refer to you. One of my favorite, favorite authors is Daniel Priestley. I haven't talked about him in, in at least two months. And so it's time it's overdue. He wrote this book called key person of influence. And in this book, he talked about, uh, there are five P's that every, person who is in business selling stuff ought to have. And one of the P's is partnership. Uh, so the five P's, I'm going to run through them really quick. It's profile, Google yourself, see what your profile is, what it re revolves. You need to have a product of an ecosystem of products. You need to have a um, partnerships. You need to have, um, I always forget the other two. So it's profile products, profile uh, partners, <laughs> let me say, say it again, your profile products, partnership, um, and then the other two will come to me. But Daniel Priestley, uh, great book, key person of influence. Each of you are a key person of influence in your business. You are an expert in your field, and it is super impo important to really position yourself as a key per person of influence. And so um, I, I love the book. Absolutely love it. I'll come back and tell you what the other two P's because every time I'm on the spot, for some reason, I forget the other two P's. Um, and so when I read this book in 2018, I had like only two of the five. And now I officially have all five of the P's. And it's something that we've worked a really, really hard since 2018 to get. So Super excited for those that are uh, doing this. We are now going to transition to open office hours. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.